Welcome back into DSI, everyone. Obviously, as we mentioned before the break, we're going to switch things up and hit the match to talk about some local wrestling. We start with the Salisbury School that's been putting in the work this season, turning some heads. That's yeah. right. We're talking about Parkside tonight. They got the chance to take on an up and coming team in Kent County, and the Rams were ready for this match. We start in the 120. Watch as Parkside's Jordan Pearson gets out of this, and he gets the reverse, and then the pin on Kent's Impressive. Nate Hickenen. We move to the 126 now, the Rams. Devin Webb keeps it going. He gets Aaron Binder, Pinder on the mat, and Webb up big in this one in the second period. Pinder trying to avoid the pin, but Webb wouldn't be denied, and the Rams would continue the run of pins. First, it was Chris Bouchelle. Bouchel. Then Matt Lewis gets the job done. Parkside dominating up 24 to nothing to start the match. Kent County trying to get back in the match, though. Alex Sipes with the third round, with time winding down the third round, gets the ref to tap the floor in the Trojan second pin of the day. But the big boys on the Rams came to play. Elijah Bivens gets the takedown, and then okay. he gets six on the board. One more rep. Coach called Bivens a project. <laughs> He's it. doing big things on the mat this year. And then it's big Mike Collins wow. in the 285 pound class. He would never, get the pin in the first rip. round, and Russell Parkside <laughs> rolls in this one 54 <laughs> 21. And we caught up with head coach. Bert Cashman after the game. It's been, um, it's pretty much been what I had kind of expected, you know, at this point. Um, the kids, uh, the kids' attitudes have been great. Uh, they come in, they work hard, and um, and that's really 90% of it, you know, is just uh, coming in with, with a positive attitude every day. And uh, they're excited. They're excited about wrestling. And I do want to talk about the, the tough schedule the Parkside has coming up, but I also want to ask you about Parkside's ability to take these football players and turn them into wrestlers. Yeah. You were mentioning there in the 10, Elijah Bivens kind of a project yeah. for yep. Parkside, but the raw strength there, yes. that's got to be a huge asset. Yes, that is pretty amazing. It seems like they have a lot of football players on their rosters. Mm -hmm. Football players, if you're out there, it is really good to wrestle. Yeah. Um, you know, all a lot of the Learn similar characteristics. Leverage. Yeah, exactly mm -hmm. right. Uh, so Brandon has a little bit more about uh, their schedule and what they have coming up. Right, so they have a, a bunch of uh, tough games against the North coming up with Queen Anne's, Kent, Cal or, or Kent Island, and uh, North Carolina, but also some good teams in the South as well with Decatur, yep. and then some inner city uh, matchups with uh, Y High and Bennett coming up. But uh, like you said, they have some really good uh, football players on the team, and yeah. I think that's a, a big nod to coaching, when yes. you can take these football players yes. and you can coach them up to uh, win in the 220 and the 285 yeah. like they're doing. Yeah. Brandon, would you say this is a prove it part of their schedule? Yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Parkside just keeps it coming with wrestlers. As we said, uh, you know, Coach Riley and those uh, football coaches are really co close with Coach Cashman. You see mm -hmm. him on the football sideline. Mm -hmm. So do, when, you, when you do get that camaraderie uh, between programs, it makes things a lot easier. And Parkside uh, came in second to Central at the Del Mar Wrestling right. Tournament. Of course, uh, and Central's know. one of the best teams yeah. in Delaware yeah. right now. Of yeah, course, so. exactly. And of course, Parkside came in first at their own tournament. Um, so uh, Parkside's pretty good. Yeah. And, and you mentioned Delaware, and I kind of want to hop over there because we do have some action to talk about yes. in the first state, also on the mats. Yeah, Sussex Central, DIAA powerhouse. Of course, we caught up with them. They were in action tonight in their first action of 2020. Golden Knights undefeated on the season, and a great start for them tonight against St. G's. Not a great start, I should say. 106 is Nolan McHale going to get Austin King to the ground, get him in the cradle. And then in the third period, McHale gets him to the ground, unable to get the pin. McHale gets 17 points for that victory. My goodness. Now to the oh. 113s, Matt Meadows gets the rough takedown for two, and then Meadows gets Dylan King to the ground, rolls him over in the cradle. Meadows gets the 5-2 to two win. Hawks leading 8-0 early. Now to the 120s, Allen Bolden going to get the rollover and near pin, but back comes Evan Brumall. He's going to get Bolden's shoulder over in the reverse, take a one-point lead. Time winding down, Bolden going to get the last second takedown at the buzzer to win 5-4 to four over Brumall. So the Hawks taking an early eight-point lead, but after three straight forfeits, here come the Knights. 152, Cade Cope gets the takedown, finally gets the pin giving Central the 20 to 14 lead. And then in the 185, the big fellas, Tyler Carl Central getting the takedown. And finally, after 93 seconds, he's going to get the pin. The Golden Knights coming back big in this one. They win it. 53 to 14, so not the greatest start, right? But a big finish. And you have to say that is an impressive match for yes. them to to start behind, come back mm -hmm. and get the win. So where does that pit them 
in terms of the best in the first eight? Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. we've got uh, some of the usual suspects in Delaware this year. We've got uh, Smyrna, Central, yeah. CR, and right. then <laughs> Milford moving from D2 to D1 is going to be very interesting yes. in wrestling because they're six or seven time defending yeah. state champion in Division Two. So right now it's very early. We don't really know who the best team is, but I would say those four are really the four powerhouses in yeah, Delaware. Yeah, you want to talk about where is it put them? Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't know. I mean, the, <laughs> Too early the, to tell. Division like One is so loaded as far as in Delaware uh, with those names that you yep. just said. Those teams are all excellent teams year in and year out. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how Milford, as you said, yep. moving from Division Two, uh, takes their strides if they take some lumps, you know, against these bigger teams. Uh, just what they're able to do. And, they got a great coaching staff right. as well. And uh, what, uh, the void in Division Two. Who fills that void in Division True. Two? It would be very interesting to see that yeah. as well. I think oh. Indian River is going to have something to say about we'll that. We'll see about we'll see. that. That's the beautiful thing about coming back from that winter break. Now for winter sports, we figure out who is going to be That's stepping right. up from the rest of the competition. That's right. Uh, gentlemen, thank you. Well, it is time for us to take our next break. But when we return, there's a new justice in the Delaware Supreme Court. And we'll tell you why today was one for the history books. I'm Jeremiah Bill from Delmar High School and you're watching Delmar Sports Insider.